Come on, Rangers! 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 York, a bloody nice place up north, a cathedral city with Roman origins, founded in 71 AD. 1,851 years later, a football team followed, one that plied its trade in non-league until around 1959, spending the next 40 years in the Football League before dropping out again. Flitting between the fourth and sixth tiers of the pyramid system for much of the 21st century, York were the playoff winners in the National League North last season and, like Dorking, have found life in the National League hard. Both teams are resting precariously above the drop zone as they enter the final run of fixtures, which means this game could be pivotal for the future. Dorking's away record is, frankly, abysmal. Mark White's side have picked up just 10 points from a possible 54 outside of Meadowbank. York, meanwhile, have managed just five home wins all season. So you don't need to have watched every episode of Columbo to figure out that this will not be a classic game of football. But dear viewer, we all know that you're not tuning in for that. Not when there's so much else happening as Dorking head to York City. I've had a really good week. I've had a great week. A lot of boys, uh, a lot of boys left at home today. Really wanted to be here. A lot of lads really wanted to be here today. But you boys here, have had a good week. You've had the best week in my book. That's why you're here, okay? Both their wing backs are full backs. Their biggest strength is that this will look like sort of this, or in reverse like this. They're all, they're very defensive very defensive. So just be mindful of that if you start forcing passes because they want you to force passes because they get behind the ball, they get their distances quite good, okay? This is a game where I need to say not a lot because our natural way we play by keeping the ball is all we need to do. This is just about us. It's keeping the ball and it's being, it's being compact. It's not doing anything we don't need to do. At nil-nil, at nil-nil today, we don't need to force anything. So we just keep compact, we just play the way we play. Moro, your job is to be compact the whole time. We're gonna try and create the sort of two V1s in high areas when we can, and then we're just gonna make sure we tap around on a big pitch at all times. That is a simple way we're gonna do it, okay? If we do need to play into wingers for whatever reason, Briggsy, Seb, don't feel the need to just bounce it out and run at them. Don't need you at times. Just take a fucking touch. Just keep this in the game just to keep the ball off of the opposition. What they will probably do on the ball, they will probably just go long and get up the field. Probably. This is bare minimal info because this is just about a factory setting game for us. All right? It really fucking is. Just remember... If it gets a bit noisy second half, nothing's really going on. It's just the fact they've got a corner, right? And, and a corner's a big deal, you know, uh, for them. Do you know what I mean? That's all it is. So just relax and fucking just keep the fucking ball. Make the pitch compact, play in units, okay? But just keep the ball off of this lot, okay? Good? I think a draw is a great result in the context of it all. You know, we start today with a point, if that makes sense, when the whistle goes. And the message is, just remember that. It's not, you don't need to force this game. At the moment, we're just trying to get back to what we know, which probably isn't quite good enough for the division. But I'm looking at, you know, if there was a clean slate and we could go again, I'm looking at Aaron Kjeld in training and thinking, wow, you are the level, son. You are, the, you are what we need. Um, and I'm looking at what the new look ones will look like, but we're not there yet. I just hope we, I hope we fucking get to see it next season. But this is about now, at this stage, it's about just getting over the line, over the line with consolidation. That's all that matters, no matter what you do. There's no prizes, you know, for coming one place out of the playoffs, you know, so consolidating is the key. It, it, the outline, yeah, the outline is we're gonna go, we're gonna go hybrid for sure. 
we're not, uh, you know, no longer are people going to have to work all day and then go to Wanderers and listen to me talk about how York play. We're going to be able to stay over the night before games at our distance and invest in things that are going to make a big difference. There's no question, there's no question that this is why people hate fucking kids. This is why, honestly, I fucking hate kids. So I've got a radar on fucking noisy kids. Um, there's no question. Look, I mean, bless them, but they're fucking annoying, aren't they? And just to be clear, I think my own are fucking annoying as well. So it's, don't, if anyone's, if that's someone's kids. Um, look, I've got, we got an email in the week from a woman at Notts County whose son was a mascot, who put in an email complaint about my foul and abusive language as the players were entering the field. A kid's a mascot, and she didn't like me saying, suck their fucking eyes out. <laughs> <laughs> Get a grip, love. Yeah. Um, anyway, we've got an email uh, demanding an apology, saying she's got video evidence. Well, good for you. Post it on Twitter. We'll get some views. Um, Did you apologise? I said, you know what? I'll be more mindful of when there's young mascots in the future. But in the heat of battle at Knox County, I weren't really thinking about little Johnny, who's walking out with a flag. Bless him. Uh, my name's Steve Saxton, I've been a York City supporter for just over 40 years now. Um, so this is um, a second home, even though it's a new stadium, and I, I go to every away game as well. So I'm dreadfully excited because of the fact that when I was younger I used to go watch York, and I live in Dorking now. And how has the season been going? It started off well, but it's not been as good recently. Um, we probably punched above our weight, I think, for the first couple of months of the campaign. Uh, and then, of course, we had the shock of, of the manager leaving. Been a lot of off the field issues, and um, we, we're just managing to keep our heads above water at the moment, looking over our shoulders. I think at the same time, a lot of mismanagement at the club. They then got in John Askey, who's a fantastic gaffer at this level of football, but made the team really solid, made them hard to beat, and just went on a fantastic run and kind of unexpectedly went up. Things are. Challenging, but we're getting there. Within the next couple of years, I would think uh, definitely a league club. Um, that's where we should be. O obviously lower league, but um, definitely a league club, not non-league. We are, I think, between a rock and a hard place in terms of style of football. We're not quite sure whether to play a long ball or play it through the thirds. No, I don't, I don't think it's going to be cagey because it, it's two teams that are not very good at defending, really. But We play, play all right. We can play it um, on the ground, pass it around, or we can play it longer ball if we need to, mix and match. Well, I, look, I mean, it's fairly obvious. You only have to look at the table that Dorking have let in quite a lot of goals. So shoring up the defence has got to be the start of it. Things That's easier said than done, obviously. But, uh, but yeah, a clean sheet, I think, would be a really good start. They've come all the way to York City. And, 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 and from my perspective, yeah, having said all of that, I want to see goals. I've come all this way. I want to see goals. Yeah, it's got a bit deeper, can't you? I tell you, this is a lovely ground. Do it from here, Vern. You can tell it's uh, this, when you bounce it, it's brilliant though. Kind of you bounce it just like from there. My height, six foot. Because it's like, a, I feel like you can see it's a mesh, I think. You can yeah, see yeah, it. Yeah, I tried to, try to pull one out, but yeah, I think it, yeah, look, there, look. What? How do you cut it? I don't think you do. But then what about the natural grass? Well, you just cut that. Fucking hell. We just cut that at a height. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, gonna, I, I genuinely don't like think. Four, say, no, no, eight no, mil, no, and then yeah, it's, yeah. it's not going to cut the stuff, is it? Because that, that doesn't grow. But see, that, that's C. Laws of man. physics, that's, you know what I mean? That, that's, that's why I'm a floor lad, and you're a fucking. Right, really calm from the side today, keeping the ball. When the game starts, you know, we're, we're on a point already. You know, you know, for every. So it's about just being compact. Do you know what I mean? Ultron were just in no hurry whatsoever, you know? I know it's hard because of the players we've got in there. Because the minute you get Briggs and Seven the ball, it's only one thing happening. But that's okay. Anything to do with performance because we're doing all right at the time. Yeah. Just, yeah, I know. Oh, Fuck me, you're not been struck good. off. You're not been struck off yet. You. 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 you know, I can't. You still. You still. You still at this level. <laughs> you're right, mate. Yeah. 
Thanks, mate. Is that a new cap, is it? It is, yeah. Okay, so you nice guy. Talks, he's, what he does, he talks you through his bad decisions. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you don't mind that as much. Well, I call the best mate. Yeah, mate. Big fan. Yeah, boys. Time, mate. York fans, but... Ah, give us, give us a point, will you? Oh, tell Help you. us out. Tell you. Just to be clear, he doesn't make the Mass show. Massive fan, mate, honestly. Thank you. Thanks, mate. Is that, Matt? Oh, give us a point, lads. Give us a point and I'll shake you around at the end. Yeah. Right, just so listen, just mini positions, right, yeah? So just in mini positions without making it look as stupid, yeah? Mini, mini, mini. The default is really shallow and just leave one, two, three, four high and Daniel it, Jace normally and we'll play. It's a very dangerous for them playing 4-3-3 three, three, because the minute we break, break that one press, they're going to be man for man, they're going to be in trouble against our wingers. Last week, by the way, we had a great fucking start. We had a fucking good start. Three shots on target and a fucking goal in 15 minutes. Good start. We have a good start again, lads. If you get your football flow in here, it's going to be a fucking great day. This is all about breaking their high press. It's all about how quickly we can play past their front three that are going to press us and play into advanced areas and hold the ball up. Seb, Briggsy, you holding the ball up and setting a midfielder to come back across is what we're looking for. So you, yeah, that, that, that is the whole game for me is, is, is transitions. So used to when you get the ball are getting it, running out of full back that's tucked in. If we're, going, if we're playing direct into chase, make sure you go win them seconds, lads. Listen, we work hard all week. We think about it all fucking week. And the only time in football you can do something about it is when you fucking go out there. That's how football works. It ain't one on hard luck stories. It ain't one on fucking thinking about it. It ain't one on nothing else but what you do when you go out there. Okay? So come on. <laughs> Mark's plan is for Dorking to play a possession-based game, to give York very little of the ball and to not allow them to go long or short. It's a plan that should work pretty well, in theory. Still, it's going to require the Wanderers to be on form. One ball! One ball! One ball! Don't false! Don't false! Cal, that took a long time! Cal, just put it in his feet early! What doesn't take a long time is York's first attack as Shakai Ford plays Emmanuel Sunduku into the right channel as he presumably shouts, this is just the beginning, as he runs. <laughs> Duku fails to secure the release of the ball to Mitch Hancocks and Dor can get away with it. The first minute of football implies Wanderers are going to have to up their game. Didn't need to though. They tell them to keep the ball, not force it. Him, yeah, yeah, you got to do it earlier. Cow, cow, speed that up. Mark and the referee seem to get on pretty well pre-game, but that feel-good story soon changes when Luke Moore is pulled up for what is, in fairness, a pretty soft foul. Fuck off, man! Fuck off, man! That's fucking is shit. He did a fucking piss. Yes. Countering like Clarence Darrow, Seb Bowman does his best to take Mark's mind off the decision. Unfortunately, Dorking can't make the attack stick, and Mark's mind goes straight back to the Moore incident. Mate, that is unbelievable! Don't excuse it! Don't excuse it! Don't excuse it, that's Are never you a foul. With me or not? Yep, don't right, excuse listen, it then. Listen, listen, yeah? Okay? I, I get one more outburst like that, I cannot do anything. We work together, low profile will work. Play, Dan! Play! No! No! It's hard to imagine Dorking keeping the ball as planned when they're going so long. With York pressing the defenders so effectively, it doesn't leave Dan Lincoln with enough choices playing out from the back. Cow! 
Tell Dan to play! With six minutes passed, the pattern of the match isn't going as the Wanderers' coaches were hoping. Mitch Hancock's wax a volley off the post and sadly for the visitors, the rebound lands nicely for Dooku, who presumably tells Tony Craig that his six yard box powers are far beyond the defenders as he bundles the ball over the line. Jason! Jace! There's loads of mileage in setting Briggsy! There's loads of mileage getting Briggsy on the ball! Keep the ball! Keep the ball! Keep the ball! Other side! Other side! Mark's message is pretty clear if only the Dorking players could heed it. Instead, York keep getting into dangerous positions. As if the start wasn't bad enough, Dan Lincoln pulls a muscle making that save. What happened? Your car should pop as soon as I die for that. Your car? In here? Yeah. Whereabouts? Here. Yeah. That bit? Does that hurt? Is anyone playing goal or not? What's he done? He's calf. I don't know, I don't know. No one, no one, no. Anyone on the pitch, you know? In there? No, lower. Lower? Here. There? Does that hurt? As Izzy diagnoses the issue, Mark's trying to figure out what the plan is, should Dan be forced to come off. I'm, not, I'm all right in goal. So okay. That's, yeah, that's it then, yeah. The yeah, it'd be you. Got eyes are right, off. Yeah, that's it, yeah. Yeah, literally though, just tell them to fuck. Yeah, we can plan that, we'll be fine, exactly that. Yeah, fine. George Franken was offered his services as a shot stopper, although Dan hasn't given up yet, and while we do want Dorking to win this one, who doesn't want to see an outfield player in goal? It's one of the best things in football when they do well. It'll be better to have someone able body. Yeah, of course. Let's see how it fucking goes. On heel. They're putting this on you, obviously. Yeah, I'm up. Okay, do you need to score for him? Yeah. Dan soldiers on, knowing that York are going to stick it on him. Well, York would certainly like to stick it on him, but Dorking are defending well in front of Dan and they're able to protect him for now. Being a goal down away from home with an injured goalkeeper is enough to stress any manager out. So when Mark thinks the Linos missed a blatant offside, Mark, well, he doesn't react well. You have got to be joking, mate. The fourth official is not happy. He calls the referee over for a word while Dukes tries to get to the bottom of the mystery. Is there someone over that side keeping them on? Yeah, one in the middle's come out deeper. One in the middle has gone deeper. So yeah. Look, Miles come out. Look, yeah. Miles offside. Yeah, he's coming out. That's unbelievable! Okay. Evan! Don't blame me for him being bad, Aaron. Don't start that old chestnut. Annoyingly, we do have to point out that the, li the linesman got it right. You are fucking joking me. You are joking me. You are fucking joking me. You have got to be joking me. You have got to be joking me. That's four. That's four. Decision or Just not, I'm, I'm looking at behaviour. Yeah, not bothered okay. about the accuracy. Yeah, but you not be annoyed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Would you not be annoyed? Yeah. Okay, yeah. 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 Um, full. That's Who on the fucking know, pitch, mate? Talk, talk you, As Mark retreats to the dressing room where he's allowed to watch on whatever device he can find, the Dorking coaches have got to get their shit together. Honestly, I've tried rewriting that, but that's the best way of putting it. I need to get a fucking iPad to watch the game. On the pitch, Dorking are pushing forwards. Off it, Dupesy has recognised the need to sort things out. 
Dino. Dino. Our whole club looks fucking a shambles at the We need to stop. We need to fucking do something on the pitch. What's he doing? Seb's down now. Oh Kev! 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 He's, he's fucking given four decisions against us already yeah. that are fucking way off. Mark is no longer allowed any involvement in the match, meaning no team talks or communication with the bench. He's not even allowed to view it live. All he can do is sit in the dressing room and hope his coaches can help the team recover. Game Jake, game six, be like the second. While the two sides are playing the same system, and normally that means Dorking would have an overload at the back, York are shuffling around to try and stop Dorking from doing their thing, and the away side are yet to figure out how to beat that press. Sir, sir, get moving it quicker. No What's that? There's no overload, so we can't give it to anyone with Mark. Can't even give it to Dad Lincoln. After 14 months out, Matt Briggs is beginning to show why everyone who knows him was desperate to see him put on a Dorking shirt again. Still, he's getting roughed up, and that's a bit concerning. Moro, jump off! Another oh, Yes, turn here! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Too slow, obviously, slow. Obviously, stop going on. Yes! Oh, no, you can't fucking pass the ball, Jokes. Oh, 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 Got Seb, got Seb in, in, in! Seconds off him! Long throw! With Mark no longer allowed to participate in any of the proceedings, he vacates the dressing room to allow Coach Beardy to take the team talk. Beardy understandably wanted to do it off camera, so he left them to it. Suffice to say, the lads were told to win their battles and stop playing backwards. Right, coming in the Wanderers, 6-1. For a game that could be pivotal in their season, Dorking's players don't seem to have much fight in them. Yeah, they're just second to everything here. <laughs> Alex Hurst's cross should have been hoovered up by Ollie Dyson. Fortunately for Dorking, the midfielder turns the ball wide of the far post. Fucking hell, Josh. I think he means Maka. We, we've got to get him a bigger screen. Fucking date said of winning. Tuck in, tuck in, tuck in. Just made the box! Josh, make the box! Fucking rugby tackling him. Free under, free under! Oh. Go on, son! Go on, Jimmy. Shut it up! Wanderers are getting forwards now and they're seeing lots of the ball. If only they could create a clear cut chance. That. Oh, my. Gallagher and Macca try their luck, only to see Duku and Daniel Pibus and possibly outnumber Frankham on the counter. It's fucking annoying being a minute guy. You, 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 fucking, you know something happens because you fucking hear it first. Pibus rolls his effort wide of the post and Dorking cling on to that one goal deficit. But let's face it, Dorking are playing badly, really badly, and they've learned nothing from the previous 30 seconds of this episode. That is not the fucking ball! Fuck off! Jason, Ryan here!
Jason Pry's loose pass gives Dyson another chance to get the ball into the box where it eventually ends up at the feet of Ryan Fallowfield. His shot is hard and low and he beats Dan Lincoln, dropping Dorking into one hell of a mess. So maybe we won't hear it then. Jimmy, Jimmy! Frick, go on, right on now. Ah! How many fucking times? You all right? Yeah? You get hit anywhere? You get hit anywhere? No, I'm all right. No? When Adam Crooks does that to Jimmy, it's mildly irritating that he doesn't get cautioned, but even more annoying that, despite not actually having any treatment, the referee makes Jimmy leave the field of play. With 25 minutes left to play, Dorking can still get something out of the game, especially if they keep chucking the ball into the box. Get in! Oh my god! That fucking is outrageous! The ball drops kindly for James McShane, and his exquisite effort is brilliantly saved by young goalkeeper Ryan Whitley. Unbelievable. Josh Taylor's throws and Cal Kennedy's corners are giving Dorking a few openings here. Have a good one, Bob. Jason Pryor's header flashes just wide. Yeah. York wants to finish the game off, and perhaps they will. It really depends on Dan Gallagher getting away with this. We are pro-refereeing at BOA, I swear we are. So this is an awkward one because Dan should probably be getting about 200 hours of community service for that one. Things really aren't getting any easier for the referee here. McLaughlin wins the ball, and the ref sees it as yellow carder. He's got a booking for diving in the box, didn't he? <laughs> huh? It's a great tackle, but it was high. Dan was lucky there, mate. Penalty and not a foul. What? Penalty and not a foul. Really? And, and that wasn't a foul either. Boys, keep tra got to transfer the ball. Got to transfer the ball. That's where it is, Josh. Those balls in are hard for the boys. Dan, keep transferring the ball. There's only five minutes left and Dorking know it. They're throwing everything they've got into the penalty area and seeing what sticks. Jason Pryor wins a header and sets up Dan Gallagher to head home from close range. Dorking have a lifeline. Jimmy, let's go, come on! George, George, get it back! Get it back, come on! Jason, brilliant! Go again! Go again! Come on! Go again! Three and up. With just a few minutes left to go, Dorking send Dan Gallagher up the pitch in the hope that he can convert the balls they're tossing into the box. Dan! 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 Go up! George! George! Dan's going up! Everything direct! Tony! Tone! Direct! Dan adding an extra head-shaped target for the likes of Bobby Joe and Jimmy Mewitt to aim at. Dorking have a half-decent chance of scraping something from a game they probably should be dead and buried in. Fucking hell, Josh. Get in the box! Okay. There was a handball penalty shout there, but all of our replays prove inconclusive. Play on! Top scorer James McShane fires over right at the death.
done, mate. Oh, dear me. Mark once again vacates the dressing room, this time to allow Coach Beardy to issue a bollocking. Ultimately, Beardy tells the players they're going to have to step it up if they'll survive this season. The last 20 minutes was a lot, but the last 10 minutes when we started fucking screaming at Josh to make firm around, everything was in front of them, Every, everything. Even Jason and Ryan weren't making runs in behind. And um, the minute they started doing it, we were causing problems, we were getting corners, getting throws. Um, but you're 100% right, I was weren't getting in bits. Only Dan, when he come on, any little knockdowns, he was the yeah, one. Yeah, I mean, the thing, is, the thing is, right, is that we've just got to, we've got to, we've got to get rid of the uh, skill in the team. And we've just got to fucking put some boys in that fucking you know are going to give 100%. It's as basic as, ta as, basic as, as you're going to fucking find. But that is, that is really kind of where we are with it. It's my fucking show, that's the bottom line, I'm in charge. What, Jukes, what you got? Let's just go around quickly. Well, I haven't got much that's going to be... Um, Destructive. Yeah, to be fair. I, yeah. I, thought, I thought from... Sam Ball, by the way, because uh, they played it back on the stream. What's that? Yeah. Oh, mate, they should have had two penalties. They should have had two penalties. They've come out to start the game, York, fucking wanting to rip everyone's heads off. And we've strolled out here thinking, fucking here we go, another game. And they were fucking on it. And we were so far, they were first, second, third, fourth. They were fucking playing like a cup fucking final. The start of the second half was as bad as it gets. You know, it's fucking shit. We are in a world of world of bother. We're in a world of bother. We've got a lot of us here, and it ain't good. It ain't fucking good. We're putting a lot of money against it, you know, treating people the right way, hotels overnight, all the rest of it. It's just fucking shit. And the bottom line is there's nine games, um, but we've just got to, we've just got to have our, to your point, Duke, we've got to have our go-to factors. You know, Dan Gallagher fucking holds. You know, we've got, we've got to have our go-to factors that make a fucking difference. Um, and that's fucking where we are of it, do you know what I mean? Um, yeah, total wank. Away from home, we are an embarrassment. Away from home. We are an embarrassment. We look like a team that's bottom of the league. Our, bottom, our form away from home is a fucking shambles embarrassment. It really is. And I think we're holding on to the hope that we're Dawkins Wanderers and, and you know we'll start winning games and we'll outplay teams. But away from home, we've obviously just got to be a lot more difficult to beat. We've got to field a team that's a lot more difficult to beat. It's not easy when you fucking like ain't got a nile, you ain't got boys you know who can just run for you, do you know what I mean? Right, not good boys. I'm struggling on this one. Definitely lowest point of the season for me, for sure. Um, you know, straight red card on the side. First one of the season, I think. Um, you know, irresponsible. Um, I need to be in the dugout. We're in a dogfight relegation battle. Um, that's not good, not good at all. Um, although I guess probably I can appeal it because I'm not quite sure um, that I said anything that warranted a red card, to be honest. I think it was probably a yellow card. Shut your mouth, Job. It's infuriating. Listen, the officials don't mean that we lose nine games back to back and only a fucking idiot would sit here and say, you know, talk about the officials over and above what we're not doing right. But I just want to explain that I was irresponsible. That's my fault. And I'm just explaining why, why I've been irresponsible and, you know, how that gets me in that situation. So that's where that is, mate. We'll have to appeal it, I guess, and probably, probably to be fair, you know, um, by the time we get to it, the season might be might be done either way. Let's, let's see, I think we're in a world above it. I think we're in a world above it. You know, we are constantly thinking, right, what can we do here? What can we do here? We brought in some big hitter players, but it's just not, it's not enough at the moment, Rich. It just felt like we were never gonna force them into errors. Never, never. Because we just, we, we run around like we wanna be on the ball, but we're not prepared like Dan Gallagher is to think, well, I don't really give a fuck about that. My job here is to, you know, be on the ball by means of winning the ball. <laughs> it's a different mindset altogether. So I think, I think we've got a lot of work to do, mate. We're in a world of bother.
We need your support if we're gonna keep making this show. The first thing you could do is hit the like button. If you leave a comment, that'll help us reach more people. Make sure you're subscribed because that helps you watch more of the show. Um, and in the near future, we're gonna get off of Patreon and we're gonna start up YouTube memberships. And that means that you can get behind the scenes stuff here on YouTube. So look out for that soon.